Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Rocky Road. That's right, I thought I was going to show you how to make a famous candy based on a famous ice cream. But as it turns out, it's actually the other way around. The ice cream flavor was actually inspired by an Australian candy that goes by the same name, which used the same signature ingredients of chocolate, marshmallows, and nuts, and probably a little touch of Vegemite. But regardless, this is super easy to make and would make for an absolutely wonderful edible gift for the upcoming holidays. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with a bowl full of chocolate chips. And please do me a favor and use dark chocolate. Okay, I think the only way to mess this up is to use milk chocolate. And of course, we always want to taste a little bit to make sure it's okay. And then to our chocolate chips, we will add some cubed up unsalted butter. At which point, I do like to give this a quick mix. Since we're going to melt all this over hot water, and I feel like some of the butter should be underneath and not just sitting all on top. And then last but not least, we'll add a couple teaspoons of maple syrup, which I believe is supposed to be corn syrup. Except I don't stock that. So I'm going with the maple syrup, which seems to work out just fine. And then what we'll do is place that over a saucepan that has about an inch of hot water set over the lowest heat setting you have. Okay, a few tiny bubbles here or there are okay, but we don't want this boiling or simmering. And that's it, we will just leave that to gradually melt. And please do not try to stir this too early. Okay, you might see some of the butter and a few of your chocolate chips start to melt and you'll get all excited. And you'll want to give it a stir, but don't. We want this all melted before there's any movement. And while we're waiting for that, we can review our two other main ingredients which would be some kind of nuts plus mini marshmallows. And as far as the marshmallows, I'm gonna use two kinds. Some little white ones that are basically white sugar flavored. And then I found some pink ones that I cut up, which I believe are pink sugar flavored. And then as far as the nuts go, I like a nice roasted whole salted almond. But of course, if you'd rather use something else, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the highway patrol of what goes in our Rocky Road mixing bowl. And things like peanuts or walnuts or cashews will also work beautifully. And then the other thing we should prep ahead of time is to plastic wrap an 8 inch by 8 inch cake pan, which I've done here. And that's it, by now we can go back and check our butter and chocolate, which as you can see is nice and melty. And once that's happened, we can take a spatula and give this a mix. Okay, going a little bit slowly at first. And then as all that butter emulsifies in, we can go ahead and stir a little more quickly until we end up with this relatively soft, sort of shiny, fudgy looking mixture. And that's it, we'll go ahead and remove that from the heat and quickly stir in our nuts and marshmallows. And don't pull a muscle, but we do want to mix this up fairly quickly, since as you know, when melted chocolate cools, it thickens up. And by the way, pink and brown is a very, very underrated color combination. So if you can find those, I think they do make a nice addition. As of course, with anything else you decide to throw in this. All right, other kinds of nuts, dried fruit, etc. Okay, as long as you keep the same proportions between the chocolate and the chunks, really anything goes. And then what we'll do once we're confident everything has been completely coated is quickly transfer that into our pan. And while we do want to make sure everything's pushed into the corners and that we end up with a nice consistent even layer, we do not under any circumstances want to smooth out and press down the top. All right, this stuff is called rocky road, not uneven pavement. So we want to try to preserve a rough as possible texture on the top. And that's it once that's been spread out and definitely not smoothed over. We will simply let that cool down to room temp before covering it with some plastic and then popping it in the fridge until it's very, very well chilled and firm, which is gonna make it so much easier to cut as you're about to see. So once our Rocky Road has been thoroughly chilled, we'll take it out of the fridge and remove it from the pan. And I'm not sure how familiar you are with actual Rocky Roads, but having grown up in the mean streets of Shortsville, New York, believe me, I was around my fair share of them and they tend to be very dusty and dirty. I mean, come on, you can't run one of those street cleaners on a road this rocky which is why before slicing, I like to sprinkle some cocoa over the top. And then what we'll do once we've dirtied that up a little is take a long thin knife and we'll carefully cut this up into 16 pieces, which as you can see, I like to do right on the plastic. Although there are pros and cons to that method, right? The main pro is it's gonna be a lot easier to clean my cutting board, but the main con is you might get some plastic stuck underneath the candy. And people spitting out pieces of plastic's never a great look. So once you cut this, be careful to look for that. And if we use the perfect proportion of chocolate and nuts and marshmallows, you should get some beautifully clean cuts. All right, check it out. I find this stuff absolutely gorgeous, not to mention incredibly addictive to eat. Okay, I'm really not a big sweets guy and almost never eat candy. But once you start with this stuff, it's hard to stop. And I think the secret here is that play between the really sweet marshmallow and then that bittersweet dark chocolate. 
of course, elevated texturally by those salty, crunchy roasted almonds. Right, so simple yet so satisfying. So I very much enjoyed that first one. And then I went ahead and arranged some on a platter so I could take some pictures. And of course, eat another one. And I don't mean to surface shame people, but here you can get a great look at why we really do want to leave that top as irregular and rough as possible. I mean, to me, that just completes the proper visual effect. Speaking of which, after I finished that second piece, I went ahead and stacked these up for some more pictures, as is required by the food blogger commandments. Okay, when it comes to cookies or candies or bars, thou shall stack. But anyway, whether you're going to make these for yourself, or maybe to give as an edible gift, or hopefully both, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.